and here's some questions and answers. Okay, Ed, can you tell me something about that Mead 6-inch F5 reflector behind you? I'm interested in old telescopes, and also there might be a similar model coming up for sale soon in the club. What should I look for? Okay, I'm forgetting a lot of questions like this lately about some of the telescopes you're seeing back there. This one he's referring to is this short, stubby white tube behind me here. So let's take this as an excuse to learn a little bit more about that telescope and in general, what you should look for when you're buying used equipment. And here we are with the Mead model number 645, a six inch F5 equatorially mounted telescope from the early to mid 1980s. So the early versions had chrome accents. This is one of the later versions, one of the last production models made. This had the black end rings, and this was sort of a transition into the unfortunate Starfinder series. Those are some of my least favorite Newtonians of all time. Anyway, it looks pretty good. So these end rings here, for example, they're very attractive, but they're mainly decorative. They're actually a hindrance because the back one, you actually have to pry that ring off in order to get the mirror out, which I had to do in this case. There were some issues back there. The pedestal mount, good for its time. By today's standards, it is dated. No polar alignment scope, no slow motion controls, and computer control, you know, that's well off in the future. Also, it's not quite that steady. If you put heavy items on the front here, including a camera or a big fancy eyepiece, it is going to start to drift a little bit and there aren't any clutch knobs. Well, there are, but there's one here, it's not very good. As for the motor drives, this is something you wanna watch out for. I'm seeing a lot of older Mead Newtonians with suspect motor drives. Some of these, keep in mind, are coming on 35 to 40 years old. So that black cover does come off. There are five screws that you take off and there are three adjustment screws in the back that you use for a clutch adjustment. If your Mead mount doesn't happen to be tracking, take off the cover, locate those three big screws and turn them clockwise, tighten them just a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. You don't wanna tighten it too much because you're gonna risk burning out the motor. Once we did that, the tracking I thought was pretty good. I have four of these models here, and of the four, this one is the best of them all, and I think it's probably because it's the newest model. I have two of them that kind of don't work, and I have one of them that doesn't appear to work at all. So the only change that I've made from the original here is I have replaced the stock finder with a modern Rigel Quick Finder. This is a dual bracket system that you'll find in many Mead Newtonians of this time. I have a number of these on some of my other older Mead reflectors. So you may be asking, how does the mirror look? Well, I have to say the optics on this are outstanding. A six inch F5 mirror today, we're used to fast Newtonians, but back in the early 1980s, this thing was a bit of a novelty. Most reflectors were long and skinny. A little bit unusual to see a short stubby one like this one. It was advertised as a wide field telescope. So you recall that the faster the mirror, the harder it is to make a good figure on it and the difficulty is not linear. As you go from F8 to F6, F5, things get very difficult. And it becomes difficult to control aberrations, especially near the edge of the field. When stars no longer become pinpoints, they start turning into curved lines or comets. I saw almost none of that here. Very remarkable for a mirror, especially given today, some of these Chinese mirrors you see coming out, uh, the F5s, the F4s, some of them are okay, some of them are, well, let's just say they're not okay. So, you know, back then they advertised this thing as being ideal for astrophotography. Uh, you know, some of that was probably marketing. Once you start hanging a camera, a guide scope off this thing, I'm not sure, like I said, the mount is really capable of it. So I tried to apply some modern astrophotography techniques to this older model just to see what would happen. Deep sky imaging, I didn't even try it. Uh, you know, coma corrector, the weight of the camera, guiding, you know, it just wasn't gonna work out. But for planetary imaging, you know, this could be okay. I just tried putting a planetary imager in here and it wasn't too bad. The problem is, again, the mount just isn't up to this exacting kind of work. Even trying to focus on the moon with a planetary imager and taking a capture with a laptop, it just wasn't working. So what I wound up doing is I took the tube off the plate here there are these two 3 8 inch knurled knobs here. You pull the whole optical tube off and you can put it on a Vixen compatible plate, which this is the one I used. 
And you know, today all of these bolts are a quarter inch by 20 or their metric equivalent. Very unusual to find a 3 8 inch threaded bolt here. So I didn't have those holes in this plate. I had to drill two new holes. This Vixen plate of mine, it looks like Swiss cheese right now. But once I got it on the plate, I could put it on my AVX mount. I had all the modern conveniences of tracking and the computer and slow motion controls. And I managed to get this image of the moon. This is a composite of six images that I took. So the problem with buying an old telescope is that there could be hidden problems that may not manifest themselves right away. Certainly not in an inspection when you're going to see it. And some problems may not even manifest themselves until you start using it for a while. For example, on this one, I said the mount isn't perfect, but as I started to use it, I noticed just something was odd about it. It was bind in certain areas of the sky. I couldn't raise the altitude axis to the point where it needed to be at around 43 degrees north, which is where I happened to be. So I couldn't figure it out, so off the scope wizard's house I went. We took the whole thing apart, and we discovered for some reason that there is a shim that is in between two of the parts here that was supposed to provide enough spacing and enough friction there to hold the mount at a certain angle, and it had gone missing for some time. So we're looking for a shim or a washer of some kind, and scope wizard suggested Gorilla Tape. That's right, Gorilla Tape. It turns out that's a very good substance to use because it has an adhesive at one end and the other end of Gorilla Tape has that sort of textured backing. And if you put a couple of layers on that, it will in fact hold. We did that and it works. It's held for several weeks now. Another problem we had is there's an adjustment, fine adjustment latitude here, and that wasn't working at all. So when we pulled the pin out of that one, the screw was this zigzag sort of shape. We found a replacement. Once those two items were in place, the mount works much better. But again, it's not something you're gonna see on a first inspection or even maybe the first or second time that you use a telescope. Okay, so on to the mirror. As I've said before, this has a really high quality figure on the mirror. I have no complaints here. It's very sharp. If you do a star test on it inside and outside of focus, I find very few anomalies to look at. No spherical aberration, no astigmatism. It looks very, very good. But I did notice as I was looking at objects, you know, in the fall sky here, that some objects weren't quite as bright as they should be. You know, it was fine. I could see the Andromeda galaxy, but you know, I thought maybe I should see it a little brighter than it is. It's a six inch mirror, but it, the effect I was getting, it felt like it was more like a four inch, four and a half inch mirror. And when I turned to M33, that's that low contrast galaxy that's nearby. I couldn't see it at all. I had other smaller telescopes around and they had no problem detecting M33. So when I looked at the mirror, look, it's a 35 year old mirror. I pulled it out of its cell and what you can see on the left here is what it looked like. It was dirty. So I've cautioned people against cleaning their mirrors excessively, but in this case, it really needed it. The product I use is called ROR, Residual Oil Remover. You can use, you know, eyeglass cleaner that you get from your local department store. And I've even seen people use a Windex type product. It's okay. Go lightly, put a light film on it, and then dab. Do not press because any sort of dust or dirt that's on the mirror, if you press, you're going to grind it into the mirror. You're going to risk doing so. So go slowly, go lightly, and two light passes are much better than one heavy one. So after I was done, the mirror looked like what you see on the right here, much better. I put the mirror back in, went out again, and it did brighten up. And I was happy for a while, you know, for a while. <laughs> I started to notice, you know what, it's brighter, but it's still not as bright as a modern six inch mirror. So this is something you wanna watch out for. It's an insidious problem that you can't see off the top of your head or even in a first or second inspection. What happens is over time, these aluminized surface on the mirror begins to deteriorate. Most coatings are 88% reflective. Unless you're paying for a premium reflective service, most standard mirrors will reflect about 88% of the light coming off of them. The problem is as time goes on, that number goes down. This telescope is 35 years plus old and the coatings are starting to deteriorate. So if you're looking at an old telescope, one way to do this, one way to check is to get a flashlight. Just get any old flashlight. This is a light that I got, uh, that I use on my 
bike when I have to cycle at night. What you do is you shine it in the back of the mirror, and if you're not you know, long enough of arm to do this, have a friend do this, and see if you can see the beam of light coming through it. Now, ideally, you shouldn't see anything because it's a solid silver coating. It should just reflect all of the light back. But the older the mirror gets, the more light you're going to see coming through. So here's a comparison that I did. And you can see this. Hopefully, this makes sense. I took this optical tube and the Skywatcher Heritage 150P, which you saw me review earlier. You maybe see it on the frame to the lower right here. And I put the flashlight at about the same position in the back of the mirror. That's the meat on the top, and that's the Skywatcher on the bottom. I'm showing the flashlight in the back, and I'm showing what's coming through in the front. So if you look at that upper right-hand image, that's not good. You're seeing a little dome of light coming through the mirror. That is the image of the flashlight from the back. Look at the Skywatcher. That's a mirror from 2021, and it seems fine. Okay, so that's a comparison between a 35-year-old mirror and one that was made this year. Maybe that's not fair. Well, it turns out I have a third 6-inch F5 mirror here, and it's my 6-inch F5 Orion Starblast. That mirror is about 10 years old. So I ran the same experiment again, and take a look at this. That's the meat on the top, and that's the Orion on the bottom. Notice in the image of the flashlight going through the back of the telescope how much light is getting reflected back in the Orion. Well, if you look towards the front, you'll see that same dome of light coming through the back of the mirror on the Mead. And in the Orion, you can start to see, there's a little red arrow there, some of the light getting through, indicating that the coatings are starting to fail at least a little bit on the Orion. And as an aside, take a look at how our aesthetics of what a telescope is and should be have changed over 35 to 40 years. Over here is a Mead from the 1980s. That's what we thought a six inch F5 telescope should be. This is what it looks like in 2021. Okay, so as you might suspect, there is no one size fits all answer as to whether you should buy it or not. It's gonna depend on a lot of situations. I'll tell you what I normally tell people in this situation. If you're looking at an old telescope, provided there isn't any obvious physical damage to it, it's probably fine. Telescopes, last a long time, they outlast us. You know, most of the time when somebody's selling something, it's because they just don't want it anymore or they're looking to raise some money to try something else out. It's usually not because, you know, somebody's trying to pass off a problem on you. I do have some suspicions about some older go-to electronic systems. In my experience, those are problems waiting to happen. But other than that, telescopes, you know, usually are pretty robust and are fine used buys. Just be aware that if you are buying something used, you are absorbing some additional risk. There are some of these little problems that creep up that you know nobody knew about, including the seller. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.